Welcome to Roost and Gaming guys, in the next couple of videos I'm going to be showing you how to paint two different styles of Abaddon the Despoiler mainly because I've got two commissions for him, both requesting different types of formats um, This one is all broken down, we've got the cape separate we've got the base separate we've got Abaddon himself and then we've got his trophy rack at the back this one has been converted by the owner of the actual model so as you can see it's created a more classic trophy rack rather than it being the uh, the standard one that you're going to get with the set he didn't like the the new trophy rack he preferred the older style of, of chaos warriors the first one i'm going to show you um is going to be this one and then we're going to show this one later um but i will be i'm knocking my camera uh, so I'll be talking over what I'm doing uh, and allowing you to see the process. This one's mainly going to be using sort of washes and inks. This one is going to be more traditional. First up, we're going to airbrush Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to do a pre-shade. And we're going to do it from the direction roughly of the sword, sort of like from his left hand side going in. So I'm just slowly adding the Mechanica Standard Grey and yeah I think I'm about done on that one there Wicked. and then we're going to go for Dawnstone so we're going to build up this pre-shade using different layers of uh, greys so if you've got different layers of greys it's advisable just to be able to use your different palette just as we're slowly building up the edges admin grey next or administratum grey and again this is just tiny bits we're going to put it on the edge of a sword we're going to put it just far left just to try and make sure we've still got that gradient mix. Dragon of Nightshade is going to be next. And we're going to paint all the armor pieces with this wash. Now effectively we're going to be doing like a pre-shade, then we're going to be washing all the armor pieces with different washes and different techniques. This is something different that I've not really done before. The result is quite amazing once it's actually finished, but trying to get that result is um, very different from what I've ever done. I'm going to hit it with Caraberg Crimson next. This is mainly going to be on all the cloth portions. Pardon for the background noise. It's very warm to tear when recording this. Um, that's going to be on the sort of the loin cloth and his cape. both inside and out of the cape as well. I'm going to have the cape as a total one colour. Then we're going to go for Drooky Violet. This is going to be painted on the bone sections. I know it's a bit of an odd choice to put a violet on bone, but it works, honestly. And then we've got Agrax Earth Shade. This is going to go on any area that's going to be brass slash gold, just to give it a base before we start applying all the correct colour. Now, I'm moving on to a contrast paint. This is Black Templar. I'm going to be doing this on the armor pieces, leaving the edges of the armor pieces with the Drooky Violet. Now, the pre shade should have allowed the armor to look like it's actually got a, a bit of a light source coming in and to give it the natural highlight without us having to go back over it. Gonna hit it next with my feast and red. Now I'm gonna dry brush this onto all the air, all the red areas that we actually hit with Caribou Crimson. I did forget to state that I hit the um, his top knot as well, his hair on his top knot. That's going to be red. I actually hit that with Caribou Crimson as well. So we're now just dry brushing, just a heavy dry brush onto all the cloak areas. This does look rather good when it's actually finished to be honest with you it's a technique I've never done before but it, it does it well especially for really dark reds next up we're going to use an orange this is just Troll Slayer 
And we're just going to hit the edges with this Troll Slayer Orange. We've already done the, uh, the build up, as it were, with the initial Beast and Red. And then we're going to be moving on to sort of the brass areas. This is going to be using the paint Screaming Bell. So I'm actually painting all the areas that we've gone over, all the areas that's going to be like a gold or brass. Just leaving a slight bit of a recess with the Agrap Surf shaded black in the corners. And I'm going to be using quite a small brush. I actually use, when I'm using a small brush, I use a Games Workshop small base brush. It's actually, when, if you keep it clean and keep it nice, it does get a really, really thin edge for you to be able to work with a lot of this process. Uh, I use it for a hell of a lot of painting. I do use some other cheaper brushes for the vast majority when I'm painting on vast areas, uh, simply because it doesn't. It means I'm not, I'm not destroying my actual good brushes. And then when it comes to my good brushes, I make sure that I clean them after every project. What camera wobble? And that's me off camera, unfortunately, getting the tips. So as you can see, so far I've painted all the brass, we've painted the red, we've painted the black. So he's coming along quite nice in this particular format. Alright, so next up I'm going to be using the grey sear paint. And we're going to block in um, the cloth that's actually on his shoulder. I'm going to be doing this with a contrast technique. So we're going to be painting all of that particular shoulder up. As you can see, I swapped brushes because I was using the small thin one. That's the small thin one was because it was more tricky in that area, and then I moved it over to a larger brush. Now this is for this is just my feasting, not my feasting, my kind of standard grey again. I'm going to be doing the. This is a commission for Mills. You've probably seen him on the channel, and he wanted his he wanted his Chaos Lord to basically be a bad guy against his own Lunar Wolves and since he's got uh, Lunar Wolves and we're doing a bit of the story of his Lunar Wolves in 40k he wanted me to paint the base up like that. Back onto the cloak we're hitting it with a heavy contrast paint of wild wood and that's painted on all the fur we're just leaving the flap of skin or what looks like sort of internal flesh I'm just going to leave that for the moment and all the uh, actual fur itself is going to be done in wild wood. Now the flapper skin on top I'm going to be face, first off painting it with Volupus pink. We are going to be doing a red on it later on, but at the moment we're just getting the base sort of pink. This doesn't, it doesn't dry like a light pink, it's very very dark. As you can see I'm actually doing the red. Uh, start off with different areas, there's some little bits of pelts, things dangling off a trophy rack. Just for ease and quickness and to make it look different, I just did that with the actual red. Now coming back onto the figure on the base, I've actually used a Administratum Grey, uh, no sorry, Dawnstone, followed by Administratum Grey and I'm just dry brushing the initial feelings on there. This is just to try and get a white, as you can see I'm finishing it off with the white. Um, just to finish off the figure. It makes it look like it's been beat up. It doesn't make it look fresh, it doesn't make it look clean. It makes it look like it should be part of the base. Then I've got Retributor Armour. Uh, using your wet palette, just to make sure this is staying thin. I know a lot of the paints I've just slapped on. I'm actually do, using this as a highlight now. This is going over the Screaming Bell, just to give him his nice, very nice looking edge. Uh, this does take a while, unfortunately, and it's not my favourite part. To bring all the brass and gold together, I'm just going to finish off by put using uh, Agrap's Earthshade Gloss, slightly different to what we've done, and just slapping a bit of that on, just to try and bring all the aspects of the different colours together. Now we're going to be putting some silver on there. I'm actually going to be dry brushing 
But claws with silver, I'm actually using an old bolt gun metal, but you can use lead belts or any other silvers that you've got. Just make sure it's a, a medium dark silver, not something that's too bright. And that's going to be dry brushed onto the claws. Then I'm going to be using Necron Compound. Uh, again, this is going to be dry brush. This is a dry paint from Workshop. This is just to give the edges the highlight that's needed. And of course, I did use a little bit on the golden brass areas just to finish off the edges. Now I'm going for a pure colour. This is the old school black. It's the old school Abaddon black, uh, and that's just to paint the trim of the uh, warrior underneath. And then highlighted it with uh, some dark reaper. Now we've got your shabti bone. I'm going to be kind of dry brushing this huge shabti bone heavily. This is a very old small dry brush onto the bone pieces. Uh, so the bone piece on his chest. Uh, underneath anything that will be on a trophy rack, although there isn't one on this guy. Now I've gone back to hand painting. This is hand painting the uh, silver bits in on the claw. Should have done that at the same time, but I was waiting for that to effectively dry. Tyrant's skull. Again, dry brushing with the small dry brush just onto the bone features. And I also did it a little bit across the cape. That actually gives it the it finishes the cape off quite nicely. Does that a little bit of tyrant skull? Um, I've not needed to shade any of it. Back to dry brushing white, and this is going over the actual sword. Now I've decided I'm going to airbrush the sword, and this is to start. So I'm going to heavily dry brush it to the top. And I also paint up his face in white as well in preparation to what I'm going to be doing for his skin. Now I'm adding a bit of grace here to the top knot, that's actually just above his head. Now that's flesh coloured, hang on a second, that one is dark or flesh, and that's just been painted all over his face. We've got a grey, a griffin grey I believe it is, this is just going to be painted onto the silver areas. This is actually a lot easier than doing a null oil wash and then going back over it uh, with the silver. Now I'm going to be dry brushing his face, so I'm going to be using first a bit of Cadian flesh with a bit of white just to try and make it quite, quite bright. As you can see just using that small dry brush again. And that should really finish the face off. Going back onto Abaddon Black, I'm just finishing off. Uh, to be honest, I did his eyes. And I'm not going to show, I tried doing it on camera, but it didn't work on camera. It really, really didn't work on camera. Um, the base, I, whatever basing technique you wanted to use, I actually just use, um, I used to call it Be Beastial Brown. I think it's called Rhinox Hide now. Still call it Beastial Brown in my head. Uh, and that just got painted all over the actual base itself. Scrag Brown was then dry brushed heavily over the top. This is just part of my highlight, you see, it is. It is actually quite a heavy dry brush that I do. It's not got all the paint wiped off. You do get, still get quite a bit of paint actually on the texture of the base. Finish that off with some Tyrant Skull. And that's just a light dry brush. Now, I'm doing your shifty bone because there's some skulls on the actual base itself that I've missed. Uh, so I'm just painting these in as an alternative to the skulls that I actually painted on the figure. Back onto Screaming Bell, and this is for the shell casings that I actually found. I didn't find that until I actually dry brushed the whole base. And I went, oh, there's some shell casings there, so I thought I'd better paint them. Um, so they got painted with Screaming Bell to start with. Then of course I'm just going to use uh, Agractor shade on all of it, so the bone and the uh, the brass. Now we're going on to the airbrush for the actual saw. We're going to be hitting it with Sotek Green, and hopefully the white that we've already dry brushed with the grey and the shade and everything else should mean that we haven't really got to do a lot of work on this. It's 
still dry brushed it with a little bit of Temple Guard Blue and then I got uh, Dragon of Nightshade and just put it into the mounds on the actual sword. And that just separated it just a little bit. So once you've hit it with the varnish, finish up doing your bases and that's it. Quite an interesting thing on the sword, not having to do a lot of work on there. Normally I'm, I'm used to just having to do a hell of a lot of work on any particular power swords. And here's a bit of a close up. Not bad. <laughs> um, so if you are wanting to paint it this way, it didn't take me too long. I was painting two at a time. The second video is coming out next week. Um, but it's just techniques that you need to know. Dry brushing technique, inking techniques, and just sometimes just some free shading. Uh, but thank you very much for watching guys. Please like share subscribe hit the notification button for more If you are wanted to hire me for commissions if you go over to rootstem.co.uk Fill out a form just on whatever you want to actually have me do and I can give you a price for it Well, thanks very much for watching. We will see you next time